A very good morning to all. Looking at important headlines from the Hindu newspaper for 21st June. On the front page you have Kerala offers to send 20 lakh liters of water by rail to Tamil Nadu. So after initially declining to accept it, Tamil Nadu says it will take decision today. So this is a decision on Kerala's offer to supply 20 lakh liters of water. So this will go from Thiruvananthapuram to Chennai. So this is because of the water crisis which has been faced in the state. Then next is President bats for simultaneous polls. So it says the simultaneous polls will spur growth in the country. And below you get one killed in firing as violence continues in West Bengal. So one was killed and three others injured at Bhatpara Kakinara area. So this is because of the conflicts which are going on. So the police has confirmed the death and you can see that local said one more person was killed but this could not be confirmed. So there was clash which has been registered now. So violence in West Bengal is being seen now. Then on page 8 you have India's first solar cruise vessel to be rolled out soon. So this is a 3 crore boat that can carry 100 passengers which is in under construction in Arur. So in Kerala. So it's carrying up for launch. It will be country's premier solar powered cruise boat. It will be launched by expected to be launched by December 2019. And this is Polavaram project will be completed in 2021. So Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister Jagan Mohan Reddy visited the site and reviewed progress and it is said it will be completed by June 2021 and not in 2020 as expected. So this is a very important project. We have discussed it quite often under the former government to Chandrababu Naidu government. And now the Polavaram project has been reviewed by the new government. So you should know about this project. It is a river water linking project. Then on page 9 you have NHRC questions frailty of health infrastructure. So this is National Human Rights Commission which has now served notice to all states, union territories on the condition of healthcare infrastructure in the states. So this is in the context of Muzaffarpur acute encephalitis syndrome cases in which children have died. On the editorial page, the first editorial is misplaced priorities. So this is regarding you know simultaneous polls. So it says this there is no case to introduce simultaneous polls to Lok Sabha and assemblies in haste. And the second editorial is Fed signals. So this is regarding the Federal Reserve, the bank, Central Bank of USA. So the dovish turn from major central banks indicates threat of a global slowdown. So all central banks like RBI also has reduced the repo rate. So basically repo rate being reduced is dovish. So there is a dove and a hawk. So when repo rates, interest rates are reduced means the central bank is acting like a dove. You know, trying to facilitate money in the economy, easy money in the economy and facilitated growth and hawkish means when interest rates are hiked. So when there is a global slowdown of course central banks would turn dovish so that's what it says. The dovish turn from major central banks indicates threat of a global slowdown. Then the lead article is protectors of real news. So it says in this moment when democracy is threatened by majoritarianism readers can play a more pluralistic role. So this talks about how there should be free press in the in the economy as such. And then you have what yoga can teach us. So this talks of evolution of yoga, how it can present us with an alternative worldview for transforming human society. So it was International Yoga Day. Rather, it is International Yoga Day today on 21st June 2019, which is summer solstice to the longest day in the northern hemisphere. Then on Fridays on OPET page you have Pale coverage. So today the question is, is India overestimating its economic growth? So this talks about how the new GDP series has some methodological and sampling problems which have been highlighted. So even TM's Economic Advisory Council recently rejected the former CEA Arvind Subramaniam's claims that in a paper that India's GDP from 2011 to 2017 was overestimated. So this talks on this issue, which is a very important issue. And this is tension in the Persian Gulf, which we are seeing US and Iran 
uh, you know, having accusations and counter accusations against each other, which is increasing the chances of a standoff here. On page 12, you have grant plans for the farm sector. So, President Ramnath Kovind says center will invest 25 lakh crore to boost agriculture productivity. So, this was a joint sitting of both houses of parliament which was addressed by the president. In that context, this is stated. And this is one poll idea totally impractical. So, this is AIADMK, key NDLI, politely rejects PM's proposal, says it would be a disruptive move. On page 13, you have Pakistan told to go beyond cosmetic steps. So, India denies that Prime Minister Narendra Modi's letter to Imran Khan had expressed a desire to hold talks with, uh, you know, with, the, with Pakistan. Rather, India now says that it is uh, not happy with the cosmetic steps uh, which Pakistan has taken. It, ha it needs to take uh, steps which actually would make a difference to counter terrorism which, which emerges from its soil. And this is U.S. report cites Bihar shelter home abuse case. So this is the Bihar shelter home abuse case in which 34 minor girls in Bihar had, uh, you know, had been mentioned how they were being abused in the shelter home. So this had come through the TIS uh, findings. So this has been cited in a U.S. report. It criticizes systemic failure to address forced labor. Then. This is changes to IT Act to take effect soon. So it will it is being mad, mandatory to trace unlawful content now. So Information Technology Act will be modified, will be amended. So it, it seeks to make it mandatory for online platforms such as WhatsApp, Facebook and Twitter to trace the originator of unlawful content. Then on international page you have this news. Iran made a very big mistake by shooting down US drones. So this is what US President Donald Trump says that you will soon find out if the US will strike Iran in retaliation. So a standoff uh, is feared in the Gulf region and now we see further escalation of tensions here. It is claimed that Iran gunned down a US drone. And this is UK's arms sales to Saudi Arabia were unlawful. So this is a court which has ruled to you can see uh, Britain had sold arms to Saudi Arabia. So it is said this might have been used in Yemen's war. So a court in Britain has ruled that after activists said that there was a clear risk that the weapons could be operated in violation of human rights legislations. So the decision imposes stay on grant of new export licenses by UK. And then you have China confirms that it hosted Taliban leader Mullah Baradar. So this is in context of Afghanistan. China now has accepted. There were speculations and now China says we support internal dialogue among Afghan spokesmen. So among, among Afghans. So this is what the, the spokesman also says. So China has confirmed this news. Then on business page here you have news regarding a GST cut which is likely on electric vehicles. So a GST council meeting is going to take place today. So this is in that context. And then you have manual checks of integrated GST returns only for risky exporters. So this is what the center has clarified. So it tags 5106 exporters suspected to have committed fraud. So the manual checking would take place. And then you have here NCLT puts jet resolution plan on fast track. So that is jet, uh, National Company Law Tribunal. So jet, plan, jet Airways has been referred to NCLT. And now a resolution plan has been has to be finalized. And it is said it will, this plan would be put on fast track. Then on the last page you have Himalayan glaciers are melting twice as fast since 2000. So this is a study which has used Cold War era spy satellite images and it is used to study ice loss in 650 glaciers. And this is what it states that Himalayan glaciers are melting twice as fast. And below you have Japan's washi paper torn by modern life. So this is a UNESCO intangible cultural heritage. The, is world's thinnest paper, washi paper of Japan. 
and this is World Health Organization writes new prescription to prevent misuse of antibiotics. So new guidelines have been provided by World Health Organization which specify which drugs must be sparingly used because we see misuse and overuse of antibiotics as such not following the prescription results in uh, antibiotic resistance that have been developed. So now the guidelines have come, new guidelines have come from World Health Organization. So these are the important headlines. For detailed coverage of current affairs, you can visit our website ahr.com. Thank you.